there was a school shooting in Baldwin, Texas. It could turn out to be the most horrific school shooting in the history of the United States. An 18-year-old citizen of Uvalde shot his grandmother and then walked into this elementary school, killed 14 students, a teacher, and sent 13 to San Antonio Hospital. Let's have a moment of silence for those people in Uvalde. Thank you. Now we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Councilman Wilson, would you start us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, did you all have a chance to look at the minutes for the April 26th meeting? And if, if so, and there are no corrections, I would entertain a motion to accept the minutes. So moved. Okay. Moved by uh, moved by Goodman, seconded by Smith. Those in favor? Okay, thank you. The Board of Works and Safety meeting minutes for April 7th on the 21st are included in your packets for information only. Communications 2021 budget session set date. 2021? I'm sorry. Backwards? 23. So what happens when you don't put your glasses on? We what? We need to redo, so we'll go back to 21. Uh, you know, uh, let's have a redo. Save a button. <laughs> That's what happens when you don't put those readers on. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure if the council, if you wanted to maintain the same as we've always done and set that first, or that second Tuesday in July as our budget workshop or if you wanted a different date. That would be the prior schedule well. seemed to work out pretty well for everybody. Mm -hmm. That works for me. That'd be the 12th? Yes. And what time? What we did last time, 5 o'clock. Five. 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 I, I think we did. I don't know if you want to make do five, you want to do four, four, but I, that's what I was asking. What do you want to do, Scott? I'm asking, I, I'll be here regardless. <laughs> I think we did five o'clock last time. Five o'clock, I always said, mm -hmm. that way the mayor can get us our dinner and everything. So <laughs> the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Five o'clock on the 12th. appropriation is for maintenance that needs to be done on the creek itself. As some of you are aware we've been working with the county trying to come up with a plan to get the creek cleaned out and get the flow going back down so we've got some residents that are experiencing some flooding over around I think it's 6th Street and 8th Street area. Well it's pretty much all along it but yes, yeah, 6th yeah. Street is a bad place. Uh, so in partnering with the county on this we've been able to actually come up with a good plan um, economically feasible to where it's not gonna where we thought originally it was going to cost us uh, you know, 
several hundred thousands of dollars to do this, but we've been able to work out a little better plan. And so we are going to be incurring some costs and we normally budget about 20,000 in that fund. And our portion of this is gonna be around 60. So we wanted to give ourselves a little buffer, and so that's why we're asking for an additional appropriation of 50,000, takes us up to 70, should give us some buffer if we do run into some challenges that we weren't expecting. Yeah, I, I, I should add to that for the council, but this project is a lot more than that. We're, we're doing some tertiary things right now to get the creek flowing upgrade some of the bad, bad spots. We have the engineers that have looked at it. We've had the Oprah folks in, and uh, we've had discussions on what it's going to take. And uh, Lawyer Perkins has been involved in that. And part of it, for us to take care of it from uh, the gas station out here all the way through past Riddle School and uptown in our city limits, our, that's what we're wanting to maintain, the part that's in our city limits. And to do that, we need to have a resolution with the county establishing the fact that we are taking a responsibility for that. That was years and years and years and years of everybody pointing the finger as to who's responsible for this. And the thought was for a long time, okay, you get taxed for a ditch assessment, should that all be covered? Well, we find out, okay, the ditch assessment doesn't cover the Minnow Creek. And like I said, there have been discussions for years, so we just decided we need to incorporate that as part of our storm water <coughs> utility program and move forward because the only thing that's happening is people living along there are hurting because their yards are being flooded and everything else. So we have jumped in. But to get that, and correct me if I say something wrong here, mm -hmm. Attorney yeah. Perkins, to get to that state, we need more than a, gee, we're going to do this. We have to make an official record, a resolution, so it goes on file 20 years from now. <coughs> there's no question about it. Yet. So that's that's what the resolution part's all about. Well, there's two resolutions. The first one's for the additional appropriation. Sure. And then the other one is for the MOU. Right. The county. And again, the additional appropriation, we are, basically what we're paying for there is some materials that we're being able to purchase through the county because they have a source where we can get some better pricing for these materials than we would be able to obtain. And John Geyer at the county has been very good at working with Dwayne Porter and our group along that. So we already have pipe that's, you know, hallelujah, you know, every other piece of pipe in the world's on back order someplace. But we have the pipe that we were looking for and uh, and some of the gravel and stuff that's necessary. And we'll take care of those tertiary areas uh, before jumping into complete revitalization. The complete revitalization, our engineering folks have laid out for us, will take about three years. And we'll be kind of in a phased program. But once it's completed, it'll, it'll be good for many, many, many years. Way overdue. That's what's happening. Uh, any questions? Any questions from the public? Okay. Uh, I would entertain a motion and close the public <coughs> meeting and we'll go on to the resolution. Part. So moved. <laughs> Does he ever let you talk? No. <laughs> Goodman made the motion. <laughs> Smith seconded those in favor of closing the vote. Thank you. It is closed. Okay. Um, resolution and MOU. Uh, do I have a motion for the uh, reading of the uh, resolution? Which one do you want to do first? Five or six? Which do you prefer, your money or, or, or doesn't it doesn't make does any difference? Me. Let's do five first. Let's do it in the order of the number. Let's do five first. Do I have a motion for the reading? Motion to read in its entirety. If I need to do that, I want to talk. Okay. Ruth seconded that. Those in favor of reading 
number five in its entirety. Okay. All right. <clears throat> resolution 5-2022, resolution accepting jurisdiction over Minnow Creek. Whereas the Common Council of the City of Rochester has determined that the proper maintenance of Minnow Creek, a regulated drain, is vital to the health of the citizens of Rochester and the orderly development of its economy. And whereas the Common Council of the City of Rochester has determined that acceptance of jurisdiction over such portions of Minnow Creek are, as are within the boundaries of the City of Rochester is appropriate. Now therefore be it resolved by the Common Council of the City of Rochester that the City of Rochester hereby accepts jurisdiction over such portions of Minnow Creek as are within the boundaries of the City of Rochester within the meaning and intention of Anina Code 36-9-27-20 if the Fulton County Drainage Board will or has relinquished the same. Okay. Any discussions on the resolution? Do I have a motion to, uh, to accept the resolution? So moved. Second. Moved by Goodman, seconded by Fitzwater. Those in favor of accepting the resolution? Okay. It's unanimous. Thank you. So we'll, uh, we'll get the signatures for that resolution and then they go to the county. They will go through a similar process and then it will come back and uh, we'll put it on record, uh, right, Attorney Perkins? It'll and then the Board of Works should sign that memo of understanding. The, the council should sign it. No. no, I think just the Board of Works. Board of Works? The memo of understanding, just the Board of Works. Okay, the well, the MOU. Yeah. Okay. additional appropriation whereas it has been determined that it is now necessary to appropriate more money than was appropriate in the annual budget now therefore section 1 be it resolved by the Common Council of the City of Rochester Fulton County Indiana that for the expenses of the taxing unit the following additional sums of money are hereby appropriated out of the funds named and for the purposes specified subject to the laws governing the same the Middle Creek maintenance fund 4040 $50,000 out of the major budget classification services charge expenses total for the Mineral Creek Maintenance Fund $50,000. Any discussion on the resolution? Do I have a motion to accept the resolution? So Second. moved. Second. Garrett and Goodman. Those in favor? Thank you all. Make a lot of our citizens happy. That's a long overdue project and by the way, if the engineering study that we're doing comes back the way we think it's going to be, Okra is allowing us to apply for up to $600,000 of grant money for stormwater revitalization. So that, that will help. Okay. Um, under new business, we have uh, tax abatement uh, renewal. It's a real property uh, abatement. Um, for um, top industries. I assume no one's here to speak for top. They did provide their information, it was in the packet. I took a, I took a look at it. Uh, those of you who have looked at it, uh, you know, they're in their Seventh year, ten year abatement. I think it's seven. Yeah, 2015. Yeah, uh, they're certainly doing everything they said they were going to do. Uh, growing the company, uh, adding adding jobs to the tune that they were supposed to. Uh, again, growing the growing the dollar situation. Anybody have any thoughts relative to continuing that abatement? 
And as you know, in seven years, it becomes less than it was in 10. It just keeps. Yeah. So explain exactly what they're asking us to do. Continue, continue the tax abatement. Continue the tax abatement. This is the seventh year. It was a ten. Was it a seven year originally? They're, they're at the seven year period. And they're okay. They, you know, they come in. Yeah, come. They come every year just to make sure right. they're filling their. Okay. And what they that's all we're doing is confirming and continuing. Yep. Okay. But it's a, it's a process they have to go through annually. If that's the case, then I would move to approve. That's a moved by Smith, seconded by Garrett. Those in favor? Okay. Great. Okay, and then we uh, the next one we have uh, for renewal is uh, for uh, personal property renewal for uh, Rochester Metal Products uh, Corporation of Foundry. Again, uh, what year are they on, Shada? Mm, 2017. Okay. And they have continued to grow and expand the business. Uh, the numbers look pretty good. Yeah, these, these two have probably, uh, well, there have been others, but they've been very successful. They're pretty what good. The, what their projections and what they've actually done. Uh, yeah. Both of these uh, to my they're, they're pretty well run businesses. Yeah. For sure. Been, been, you know, nice to have in this community. You know, the top situation could have very well ended up in Argus. Kevin Birchmeyer, you know, he was, was operating there in a dual situation. Now it's it's all there. So we're very, very fortunate. <laughs> Any uh, other discussion on the uh, Rochester Metal Products extension of their or continuation of uh, their abatement? I move to accept. Garrett moves to accept. Second. Second by Goodman. Those in favor? Okay, unanimous. Thank you. Okay. That brings us to uh, visitors tonight. Rediscover Rochester Group. Terry Backus. Farkas. Farkas, I'm sorry. That's okay. E, okay. Did you misspell that? I probably did. Okay. I think I'm I did. I think you did. I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> Not, <laughs> I missed an R. <laughs> Not my no glasses problem. Yeah. No, that was a quick problem. Would you like to present? Sure. Um, so my name is Terry Barkus. Um, I'm here tonight with Karen Stockberger and Will Day. We are part of a project group through Fulton County Leadership Academy that is trying to get the first Friday type events established in Rochester. Um, so we have two main goals for our project. Um, one, to try and draw people to the downtown area to show off what Rochester has to offer and in turn increase profits for those businesses. And um, two, give the residents of not only this community but all of Fulton County another safe and fun way to come together in the summer months. Um, these a type of events are being held across Indiana in communities big and small. Many of them have been very successful and are growing in popularity. And as you can see, you guys have the um, documentation that I previously provided, I hope. Um, we've gotten overwhelming approval from a decent amount of the downtown businesses, including support from all of the downtown restaurants, and are highly encouraging any business to be involved in the events. For example, um, any business downtown or otherwise can set up a table or tent at the actual event as a secondary location to sell merchandise or food items. Um, we also encourage the downtown businesses to advertise specials or have promotional items on those nights to draw people in. Um, and to that end, we are here tonight asking that you consider revising the current ordinance 119.2, preventing these types of events so that as to allow them in the future, even if um, prior approval to hold the events um, would be required on an annual basis. Um, if we're approved, um, we do know that there are other hurdles we would have to overcome, and um, including approval from the Board of Works um, before we could get this obviously off the ground. Um, and we just thank you for allowing us to present our video tonight and listening to our, what we have to say. And then we just look forward to hearing your decision. 
Um, we do have, I think, there's uh, Brian Johnson would like to say something on behalf of our group, if you don't mind. Sure, Brian, your group. Well, I'm, I'm part of the, obviously from the Community Foundation, um, and we're, we're supportive of uh, more things going on in the downtown area. Um, of course, we've been able to make some grants to some create some space for things like this. Um, I think we've seen um, in our other counties that are involved with the Northern Indiana Community Foundation that um, some of these events have been very successful in bringing folks from outside the community and we're we're just here today to, to show support for somebody that has an idea that can they can come up with something that's that's mutually beneficial for citizens and also the businesses downtown um, and provide some opportunities for additional efforts to bring people in and entertainment and um, yeah so that's let me understand. Right now, you're looking for the ordinance to be changed to allow the food trucks to come. Or any any vendor, and not just food trucks. So craft vendor. Well, interesting you should say that. You work for First Federal, right? Yeah. Yes. And one of the restaurant tours asked me if their friends who are involved with the reverse mortgage could bring their trailer in. So. Uh -oh. <laughs> I don't know. But I, you know, know reverse I, mortgages? that was my first reaction. I went. They have a trailer for reverse mortgages. There's some people who are out there traveling around. Uh -huh. Yeah, trying to sell. Some of them are. From, they're from Texas. Okay. And uh, the question was just thrown out: Would that be open to every business type of opportunity on wheels? Well, the original thought was, but I don't think nobody or anyone thought of a. Reverse mortgage. Well, see, I mean, business. but that's, that's what you run into. You, uh, you say you open that commerce up. Mm -hmm. Pretty soon, we don't have the ordinance anymore. Right now, the answer is no. You can't. You can't come do that. We have people who have boots on the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that's 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 one thing that you have to keep in mind. And the other thing that's been a concern. We we had this come up a couple of years ago. And the other thing you have to concern is uh, about seven years ago. Rochester downtown started to take on a personality of its own. It had nothing to do with the government, very little to do with anything but private entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And it became the downtown of eateries. And uh, I don't know, I looked at your information. I think some of that information may be a little dated. I mean, it may have come from two years ago. Is that possible? Some of those people listed on your spreadsheet aren't even downtown anymore. Well, I did originally got information about the down the businesses that were downtown is old information, but the ones that <coughs> responded were all I mean, those were just within the last month. Well, we discussed it a little bit at the board works meeting last Thursday and uh has come on up and I'll let you have this. Each of the other two Board of Works members took uh, six <coughs> survey applications and picked up we got about 12 of our eateries downtown we felt would be affected. And uh, those are the one-on-one -on -one response, not with any somebody who worked there, but with the Board of Works member and an owner. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, it was interesting. Uh, I think your your uh, your suggestion was the parking lot right next to Jaretti's would be nice to put the food trucks in. He didn't want that. Uh, there's a young man who has taken on this new business, and it's quite a quite a thing to jump into. Mm -hmm. And uh, two years ago, it was the same thing with Dawn. Dawn told me she says, "Look, I need to sell every sandwich I can to pay." for what's here. She told me how much she had invested. Choked me. I wouldn't, you know, be that bold. Uh, so what we're talking about are people who have made these commitments, have skin in the game. There's five restaurants on there that said, no, we don't want this. Those five restaurants, on an annual basis, last year they paid $153,000 in property taxes. And next year it's going to be right around 200000 They've got real skin in the game, and to chance losing it to people whose investment is a license plate on a truck that drives through town 
it kind of chaps them a little bit. I thought I might see a couple of them here tonight because a couple of them had some real energy on this. One of them told me, and I, I apologize for the Leadership Academy, but one of them said, not only do we pay these monies for salaries and taxes and such, but guess who the Leadership Academy comes to when they want support for their coloring book? You know? And it's like, good point, good point. So that, that's kind of what we ran into with our going out and taking a survey. Yeah, now there were uh, four out of, the, out of the bunch there that said, yeah, it'd, it'd be four, three trials. And uh, here we got one of the entrepreneurs right here. Well, you, were, you were TBD or something, right? Well, I was supposed to get it, the papers here to actually sign it and put my two cents worth in. But it wasn't the, the way it was presented to me was not do I want food trucks, do I want to pay for the electricity and utilities for those food trucks. Okay, just saying, that's the way it was presented to me. Okay, well that's, okay, not the case, okay. but okay. That had nothing to do with First Fridays. Uh, we, and we did talk about First Fridays a little bit, and I know that we are one of the very few communities that actually do First Fridays. Does First Fridays only benefit the food trucks that's out there? Um, I can tell you right now, absolutely not. I worked in Warsaw and they were doing their First Fridays. And granted, it was only a Little Caesars, and I know that that's a, but Little Caesars was three blocks away from where First Fridays were. And if I wasn't prepared for First Fridays, then, then we would be behind every single Friday. Every single first Friday. I mean, we would, they would just come in, come in, come in, come in. The thing about bringing people to Rochester, what does it do for me as a business, as a restaurant? Um, whether they eat in my restaurant that day, I mean, the Evergreen, okay, well, I opened the Evergreen in 2015. The, in October, and then we had the the uh, chili cook-off. Okay, I put my menu in the window, and I watched people go. Serious. Okay, a couple of people came in. A couple of people bitched because how dare how dare I how dare this happen? I still see a couple of those people. If we did not have the chili cook-off, would those people know I was here? There's still a huge part of this community that doesn't even know I'm here. Correct. Okay? So the one thing is, is, is the location of First Fridays? Absolutely wrong. And actually last night, I just happened to be talking to a correct person. Um, that's kind of the benefit of having me, is that I don't keep my mouth shut. So I, I, <laughs> I talked to, to my customers and I says, you know, I've always worked during First Fridays in other communities, so I don't know what goes on, okay? And I don't know what it takes. And he said that this one town that he plays in, because that's why we started talking, because he wants to do music on my patio, he says, he says, they put the food trucks throughout the community, throughout the main street, parked sideways, taking up parking space. That way it forces people to walk and to walk in front of all other businesses. So this morning as I was heading to work and I was walking and I was kind of thinking of other businesses and where they're at, I thought, yeah, Five food trucks located throughout would probably benefit very good to make First Fridays a success. It's not that that day those people will come in. It's a month from now. It's three months from now. It's four months from now. And I know that 90% of our community doesn't believe that, that anybody should have ever gotten any um, stimulus package last year because it benefited nobody. But I can tell you right now that from my dining room last year, when everybody was getting stimulus packages, I saw all types of people eating. People that I knew would have never 
ever eaten in my dining room before because they didn't have the extra money. But they took that stimulus money and they spent it. And they spent it in this community. And you know what? Those people aren't eating there now because now they're struggling. So to give them something cheap to do, why the heck not? You know, none of them complained. They enjoyed spending their money. And I'm sure I'm not the only, ten, only business in the downtown that benefited from that. Thing is, we got to grow our community somehow, and if it's not from other events that, oh my God, other communities actually do and succeed at it, why not? Where is the judging place that decides what is right and what is wrong to come into the community? Where, where, well, where I don't know. I saw years ago, what was it, the 3D imaging? Did 3D imaging uh, thing hurt, hurt Woodlawn Hospital? At that time when 3D imaging was in, in town years, it was years ago. I don't know, when they very first come out, there was used to be a, a, a Solid Rock Church parking lot. They came in once a month. Did that hurt Woodlawn Hospital? Jeez, I don't know. I, the, right, they okay. Had, they had an imaging machine that sat outside. You know, was it the same um, one? I have no clue. I just saw it there on Main Street every time. <clears throat> it was ultrasounds. They were doing ultrasounds for women. Yeah. Right. And, and that trailer. You know, do, does it hurt when the uh, people come to town that say, hey, you know what, let's come and get your well checks and, and do all of this stuff, and, and it only costs you a hundred and some dollars, but your insurance won't pay for it, even though insurance will pay for it at Woodlawn, and your doctor just come and get all this stuff done. People obviously do that because they keep coming back because they keep sending me those things, and they're doing that over at the Civic Center. So at least the last one that I just threw away did. Does that hurt? Does that hurt there? We're just looking for, I mean, if changing the ordinance in a way that protects you guys still, protects right. the city, but still allows these type of events to go on. If that's possible to rewrite the language <coughs> in that way. Do you know where the ordinance came from? I don't, and I've been trying to find that out, yes. So. 50 retail merchants. We had a pretty healthy retail merchants association at one time, didn't we, Harry? About 50 people show up at those meetings came out of that. Are we, sorry, I, I, first time here, is this, are we allowed to, I'm a part of the group, am I allowed to? No, she can give her time over to you. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I guess my question is, uh, how many of those merchants are still in Rochester? Well, I, 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 just curiosity. It's a good, yeah, good yeah. question. I, I think Harry would be uh, the one to speak with that. Harry's president of the Garden and it's the spin-off of the retail merchants, but there's very little retail. You know, downtowns all over aren't the dress shops and the men's shops and the, you know, the, the, the bakery. I mean, those things are, you know, they're either in malls or people are ordering that stuff off of Amazon.com. Uh, so the downtowns have changed dramatically. We've got, like I said, we've become the main street, the downtown of Phoenix, and thank God for you, Ruth. You did, you took your part. You took a big chunk of the uh, uh, west side of Rochester and made it very presentable. Uh, so it, it, it's different, different uh, downtown today. But like I said, we had nothing to do with that. These were entrepreneurs who decided to. Jump in, buy the building, put skin in the game. Uh, we did have the uh, the, uh, the grant, the Oprah grant, for the revitalization of some of the facades of those buildings and stuff to help. But these are people who put their money on the line, right. and they're trying to get a return on investment. Some of these same folks commented. You commented about COVID. Some of these same folks we talked to said, you know, went through the COVID period. I went through the period of working all the time because I can't get employees. This is a tough business. You gotta have some empathy for those folks because they're the ones who are paying the, the bills. Sure. So, sir, back, did you? 
What about uh, the park that we put down here on Main and Knight Street? Uh, I know when that was built, uh, there was extra, extra electrical stuff put in for them to have food trucks and bands and stuff there. Well, there's what? actually, excuse me, that there's actually uh, the electrical set up for two, two vendor type trucks plus the, the, the green area was supposed to be for a portable stage to have some bands or whatever you wanted to have. But that's the, that's the other part of it. Uh, certainly not opposed to having those things that Christine's done a great job my gosh she's, it's not easy is it it is not <laughs> <laughs> and and the one thing that people tend to forget about these uh, festivals or and, and you correct me if I'm wrong they're not a 30 or 60 day venture you spend all year at it don't you and that was the, the history of the round barn festival and that was history of the Kiwana Festival, and that's the history of the 4th of July Parade. Over. There's a group of people that they're, they're involved all year long putting that stuff together. It's work. It's work. And I thank you. you I, you've had a couple events now that you've done a super job with. Thank you. Gary? Yeah, my two cents, not necessarily representing RDP, but I, you know we, we do have a very unique downtown in, the, in that we are very fortunate to have such good quality restaurants in our community. There's no doubt about it. Boy, that's and, true. you know, these yeah. events holding on a Friday night is their biggest, you know, it's their biggest night of the week. And I don't think anybody wants to see an event be held that's going to pull customers away. I, I understand what we're saying, bringing, uh, but first Friday events could also be um, not necessarily food related. Let's bring people and have the restaurants, you know, got a capacity of probably could serve a thousand people in our downtown on a Friday night. What's what's build capacity with other events and if we get to the point where there's no place to eat and the lines for restaurants are long, we could possibly start ad adding some additional things. You know, Warsaw just had a bike event last Friday night that attracted thousands of people, you know, and they needed to bring in extra uh, food vendors for that. But not every Friday do they bring in food vendors. They kind of they kind of scale their event based on what they think the turnout's going to be. But you know, keeping the restaurants um, viable and busy is the is the ultimate goal. I mean, the retail part of it is probably insignificant because most doors are going to be closed when these events are happening. Um, there might be some early stuff that would attract, but. You know the setup time and and and, and that of a, an event like that is somewhat disruptive on a Friday night and may and may deter some uh, last minute um, retail. That being said, the the potential boom of having a big event that's drawing a lot of people, and then I'm not sure we need to sit there and say let's just make it a food truck event. Let's make it a let's make it a promotional event that's that has some activity. Is it bands? Is it is it art? Is it, you know, some kind of performance? Um, and if we get to the point where we're drawing more people than we can possibly uh, serve, then we can start supplementing with some additional um, food events. I think my, my question is, is there an estimate? How many you, how many, is there a number on number of people who might, this event could draw? And when you talk about in your proposal advertising, uh, we're talking about advertising in other towns. Right. Okay, and then Harry, I don't know if you answered for me, the, the last the, one of the last points in the proposal is the Rochester Downtown Partnership will help get it off the ground. What does that mean? What what role are you guys willing to take in this? We haven't been approached to be participating at this point, but well, you know. Um, I originally she reached out to me and I did talk to her. About, okay. about um, how my festival works, um, things that I have done, and so I let them run with what they are proposing to you. And if everything works out, the promotions committee would work with them to make sure everything works properly. Well, you are uh, certainly a resource for them to talk mm -hmm. to and work with because you know fully well going back, mm -hmm. you've been doing this two years now. Mm -hmm. Going back two years ago, you better have a plan. Right. 
you know, with the upcoming, you know, by fall, we're going to be into the round box offer going on Friday nights, Thursday and Friday yeah. nights, every other week. Yeah. That's going to draw a tremendous, hopefully draw a lot of people. Um, so, I mean, I think I, all the synergy I just love, and I don't want to do anything to squash that. I think they've got a lot of energy, and, and, I, and I really appreciate them trying to do things that are going to be fun and, and engaging. But I think the food truck portion of it should be downplayed until we build capacity. I just want to say that the reason we didn't say food truck Fridays in our proposal is because we don't want you to think it's just about food trucks. That's not the case. It's definitely about any any vendor who wants to bring in selling Tupperware, Mary Kay, uh, church and organizations wanting to hand out flyers. I mean, it doesn't, it can be anybody. It doesn't have to just be food trucks. And I also want to come just correct you that I have approval, written approval by email from at least eight restaurants downtown. So. I don't, you know, I don't know where the floor came from, but I did, I mean, that's, a, I think all of the downtown restaurants right along the main street. And as far as your point the about having- The owner's signature are on those. I'm sorry. Those, you look at those forms, the owner's signatures are on them. Those were one-on-one -on -one with the owner. Right, but I'm, I'm talking about the emails that I have, which I did not send you, but I have emails directly from owners of the businesses. But I wanted to get to your point. Um, the original idea was to be able to block off a street. And I don't know if you're talking about blocking off Main Street, which is what we wanted to avoid. We don't want right. to avoid or block off streets. Park them parallel to the sidewalks. So that so people, people are approaching the food truck the from the sidewalks. Yes. Not yes. out in the street. Right. And that's the way okay. another community does it. But the reality is, is every community does this. Mm -hmm. Okay? So why do we think that it's not a good idea? No, no every community. Does. Okay, a lot of Okay, you can go to Warsaw, you can Let's go to, you can go to Berkeley. Yeah, 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 the damn landing to come downtown to cook food. Why don't we Absolutely. ask? Why don't we ask other people that's inside this city limits that are actually also paying yes. property yeah, taxes for this town? The graphs, right? Why aren't they here? I mean, I, I, I mean, I understand like Kiwan is still in our area and stuff like that, but I know there's going to be food trucks come from there. I know there's going to be food trucks probably popping in from Logan Sports stuff like that. Why don't we just take care of what's here in Rochester? I mean, I know plenty of good people. In Warsaw too, and I go to the first Fridays almost every year. I mean, every month with my family because I'm from Costco County, or live in Costco County. I'm from here. Um, but my biggest thing is, I definitely don't want it in that parking lot where you guys are trying to set it up. And I understand why it's a good location for you guys, but you have Mikey's that uses that as overflow. Fridays and Saturday nights are our biggest nights. I mean, yeah. I I employ 35 people, right. you know, and that's counting, you know. A front of house staff of 17, they're going to be losing out on their biggest tip night once a month. So, I mean, that really hurts them. Where, on, I guess, where I'm going with it, I would be able to gauge for here if we hold out the food trucks or any food vendors that aren't from Rochester, bring in other vendors as long as you can get, you know, the native nook. Yes, they have art, but she is already paid. She doesn't take any of that commission that comes off of there. So that that would bring in, so she can set out her artwork outside, and the artists can still benefit from that. I think a lot of other vendors that are in downtown aren't open that late, and I'm all right with that. But when it comes to like my sales on Friday nights, just I've only been open for two and a half months, but I can tell you Friday nights is my night. And I, I, mean, I don't even know if there's a thing yet, but. Is there something as like second Sundays because I'm not open, a lot of the restaurants aren't open where you could bring in the food vendors. You have like a family day, you know, it's going to be an easy lax day, so you're going to have less people that are going to be coming downtown to get rowdy, I would sure. per se. Sure. And you're not really hurting anybody that way. And like, I guess that's just my thoughts right now because I was approached for that we were doing like themes and bringing like things downtown. There's going to be bands just like they do in Warsaw where. Yeah. Then when I was approached and why I signed off that I did not agree was because like they said food it was mainly all about food trucks and bringing food trucks to park and like use our utility that's in the back of four. So maybe we there. should have had somebody else do those surveys instead of yeah, was, instead of restaurants. Yeah, I've never. You know, you know the thing is, is, is one morning as I was getting ready to go to work, you know, I had TV on 
and somebody, they were interviewing somebody on, on whatever. And anyway, he ended up being from Elkhart. Do you know what his job is? He was hired like four years ago. His job is to make sure that there is something, some type of an event going on downtown Elkhart every single weekend so that they can bring business to town to see what there is so that when they're not doing the events, maybe people from other communities would want to come to this town and benefit those places that are, that are trying to live within the town, um, trying to make their living. And the thing is, is he says, I've been doing it for four years, and you know what, I've got three weekends to fill up this year. That's my goal this year, is to fill up three weekends. And all 52 weekends has something going on in downtown Elkhart to bring somebody to the community, to introduce them to downtown Elkhart. And I think that's the whole purpose. That, that's, that's the whole purpose of First Fridays, is to bring people to the community to say, Oh, wow, look at this. Look what they have. The Evergreen does not benefit massively. My, my sales do not triple because, because of, of um, the uh, chili cook-off. Throughout the year, do I get customers that say, I would not have known you were here if it wasn't for the chili cook-off? Every single year, all different people. Jay, you mentioned something about maybe somebody else should have done a survey. I, I think there have been assumptions made by this group and different assumptions that have been made by um, not necessarily the city council, but at least the mayor and the board of work. So the questioning could have been different. That being said, though, we have seen nothing about the plan is uh, how many food trucks we're talking about you, you mentioned the back parking lot that is behind Giretti's. we don't i don't believe it i may be wrong but i don't think that parking lot is set up for electrical connections and or water to have a bunch of food trucks there um, I saw you shake your head when he mentioned um, the cost of the utilities and the fees, and you said that's not accurate at all. Well, where will we see what the fee structure is? Who, who is paying for the water? Who is paying for the electricity? Well, in the proposal, I'd ask that the city could donate, but if that's not an option, I mean, there would. that's why we were wanting to partner with the, uh, the downtown partnership just for money purposes, to be able to get grants. Yeah. We don't have, we're not an organization. We have to have a, you know, a, an ID number with the state to be able to get grants, and we don't have that. So the money, for the Rochester Downtown Partnership was the reasoning you know, for using them was money coming in and out. So we can get grants for you know, doing the things that we need to do. Yeah, for the, promotions or a water electric if need be. And the issue with the city providing that is we're using tax dollars to fund for-profit businesses, and that's that's just not something I, I would ever support. Um, so I, I you know I think something like this would need a fee structure because if we're paying <coughs> water and electricity, why wouldn't we be paying it for the other vendors? And if we're doing that, then I'm going to sign up for it too. So that that was that was an issue for me. Um, I, I like what you guys are trying to put together because we we always talk about. We want to bring people to town, we want to bring people to town, but then every time the answer is no. Um, you know, going on with Mark says, I, I think if a better, um, a better plan, you know, a, a broader plan that was more, had more information, more details, would be much better for us. And I agree with, with uh, <clears throat> Harry back there that, you know, maybe not worry about the food trucks, promote the local restaurants and let them come out and be your vendors. Um, the couple I talked to downtown, not restaurants, they had a problem with the, the parking, like that taking up parking spaces downtown. If it started after a certain time, most of them would be closed anyway, but um, 
th those are the kind of things that I like. And you know, I'm going to tell you because I, I, I've been here a while and I see this. That ordinance, you're, you're always going to we're always going to be saying, well, if we open that up, everyone's going to come in. You know, it it would be on us to define that, and we'd have to work with our attorney to you know, figure out how we could limit it because you know we don't just want to open up carte blanche. You know, we want to be detailed. So, I mean, those are the kind of kind of hurdles that we're looking at. But I do appreciate the plan you guys are putting together. I would like to see more detail. And I apologize and, if there wasn't yeah. a lot of detail. Um, from the get-go, we were pretty much told this was never going to happen. That no, no, we were going to get told no. So that, I mean, and honestly, we didn't do ourselves any favors by not, you know, bringing as much detail as we could have. But I think that just that in itself didn't you know we figured why put in all the effort to get all this information and then it's going to be a no anyway so you know that, well, that's I, and I, th I think you've got a great idea because you know it used to be friday nights and saturday nights you went downtown and you walked around you went shopping you went to your parents you know you may have a check then you walk around downtown you have a shoe store you go around and you see the business uh before kids and their games now but anyway right. I like your ideas the only thing is is being in a bar and restaurant business for 20 years myself if they would set up <coughs> trucks on Friday night in Mentone we would have had some serious discussions in, in, in the city of Mentone because that was my business night and I bring employees in and if you're going to feed them on the street I'm not going to get them in I'm not going to I'm not going to get the percentage because I'm going to be busy on Friday night Saturday night and then it's with our restaurants here in town the Ruth restaurants there too I've gone in there before you know bus sir it's an hour wait I'm, great I'm tickled I think it's great uh you know that the business is that good uh and that's what I want to see I want to see the restaurants in town get their business everybody get a piece of our local pie and then the other thing I saw is that we were they were going to ask for taxpayer money for water and electric and that was of course I, I couldn't go with that either. But bringing things to town to get people to come to town is great. I'm just totally opposed to setting up food vendors around. And I don't care if you space them out down the streets or you put them all in the city park. I'm not really, I'm just not for that on Friday nights for people that are, of course, right now struggling to get help. My goodness, goods mm -hmm. that they can get into the store to have any type of competition. I don't want our people to have competition on on their busiest night. Okay. Well, I just want to say, if nothing else, out of this night tonight, if just to open up the conversation, you know, and and to maybe allow events similar to this in the future, maybe not necessarily the food trucks. That's fine in the beginning, but just you know, like we all said, we all want business downtown. That's the goal. Um, if we can find a way to make that happen and you know like I said protect the city protect the restaurants that's fine but I just want to look for a way to bring citizens downtown and get eyes on the restaurant because you yourself said you had people come months later you know that's exactly it that's what yes, we're looking for and I actually talked to restaurant owners in Argus which I understand Argus is not Rochester but those you know those restaurant owners some of them said the same thing that they would work you know, received comments during the events that, you know, people were saying, I didn't even know you were here, you know, that, and they came back later, you know, and, and mm -hmm. wanted information. So that's the goal here. You know, you've I'm not got, here to put any You've got the wheels turning just to come up with a, a better game plan, maybe, you know, right. for something that we can that we can chew on a little bit better than this because the few things that, that we're proposing <coughs> this one, I, I think, you know, I, ju I can't go along. With, and I'm sure that some of us feel the same way. But if you if you and you've got you've got the wheels turning, and that's the main. And that and that, that that's it. I mean, I just want yeah. you guys to think about it going forward because this isn't the first time. Obviously, this has been brought to you guys. So I mean, I think this is something that the citizens want, and some of the people downtown, owner, the business owners, they also think it's a good idea. I mean, there might be some that don't, but there's some that are, and I just think that you know, just to give it a shot, even you know, or. If not do it now, like think about in the future. Think about revising the ordinance to allow it. And yes, definitely getting with your attorney in ways that protects you guys, but you know, changing the verbiage to allow it. Because if you don't change the ordinance, then it's never gonna be able to happen. That's I guess that's I don't understand government that well, but I, in my thinking, if the ordinance never changes, then these type of events, you know, food trucks related or not, they could never happen. 
Well, I, I just want to make sure we're protecting our people who have skin in the game. Right. We've made an investment. You didn't have this on your business plan, I'm pretty sure that there was going to be a parking lot full of food trucks. And it doesn't have to be that parking lot. Uh, I mean, we're, well, I mean, still, it was a it suggestion. Just, Actually, another business yeah. owner downtown is the one suggesting yeah. that. Uh, but the point, point being, seven years ago, I looked back in the records and took a look at Rochester. We had four places where there had been restaurants that were closed. Today, it's the first time from way back that I can remember every one of our places that were a restaurant or are a restaurant are open and doing business. The latest being uh, American Restaurant out there on the 25. Uh, we've come a long ways with the personality being a community of eateries. And we certainly don't want to do anything to squelch that investment. <laughs> My thought, like, initially, <coughs> our thought is to have you guys be able to have some buy-in on like what you want, right? And this is your this is your business. You have skin in the game, so we want feedback from you. Like, I'm not hundred. Like, I don't think the Sunday idea is a terrible idea necessarily. Like, this is some of the conversations that we've had as a group. But we was out of the room. Yeah. yeah. Well, I met at the, uh, I was in the church. first Friday of Friday. Yeah, but this is something right. we have Because all the businesses are closed. I see. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think a lot of restaurants are closed Monday. Do you do you know years ago, and Harry again backed me up, this group of fifty of the retail merchants, they're the ones who decided that Thursday afternoons everything would be closed. You remember that? Thursday's my third day. Yeah. You remember that, Harry? Yeah. 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 No, it was Friday. It was Wednesday, no, in, it was Wednesday in Peru. It was Wednesday in Mendoza. Yeah. Yeah. The, the first and the second and third year I was open, I was invited over to Culver. Okay, for and I don't think I don't think it was Lake Fest. I don't know what it is. Their food food thing. They're on the lake. On the lake. Okay. So and and lo and behold. Who was helping with the main part of putting that on? The dude that owns the lake house. And Papa's was really involved in that. And we were right in front of the lake house. Okay? I also went to the Plymouth one um, two years. I would go back to the Culver one. It helps that much. And it's, it's people from all over that went to Culver. I mean, it wasn't just the Culver citizens. It was from Peru. You met people from Kokomo because there's something to do. There's a group of people that just look for things to do on Friday and Saturday night because they're not like us that work on Friday and Saturday night. So they go out and find something, and that doesn't mean that they all. I'm glad you included us. I don't work on Friday and Saturday night anymore. Thank Every you. single. Yeah. So, and I don't mind it. Love everything. Uh, you know, so bringing the extra people to town it is is a, is a is a huge benefit. It just is. And and right now we have 31, and when 31 gets closed off, I have a lot of people that come to me just because of looking on Google and coming through town. I have people that go down to Florida and have been ever since I've opened found me my first year and they make sure that they stop both coming and going um, to stop at the restaurant and the only reason they did was because they found it found me on Google so there's a, personally if I went to an event downtown it would get to know the town and experience and learn new people I would never eat at the food trucks you know why because I would never get full enough. I need more food than that. <laughs> I mean, you know. So I always pit a restaurant in those towns to eat at. Bryce, to your comment, uh, how many Jillian? You're back there someplace. Right here. Oh, there I did. I woke you up, did I? How many people did we have at the car show this last year? Was it five thousand? About eight thousand. Eight thousand. Eight thousand people were in Rochester for the car show. An event doesn't hurt. 
You're That's absolutely right. right. And it's <laughs> always based around event and the, these other communities that are larger than who have made First Friday work. Because you have to do that if you're going to bring in the First Fed, I mean the First Friday stuff for the food trucks. You have to have some kind of event that it's based around. But like I, I still think where you have to build up to that size since we are a smaller community and there's a lot of other First Friday events going around here. They're, you're going to have a hard job pulling people from Kosciuszko County to not go to Warsaw downtown to come over here. You know, and that's, I mean, that's the richest county closest to us. I mean, that's where the money's going to be coming in. The people that are going to eat at my restaurant and eat at Ruth's restaurant or spend money at other fine eateries downtown. It's you, just, you do have Rochester people, businesses, that are going to Argus to set up as vendors as well because they don't have a food truck right or a first friday type of event here. two bars and a subway i understand that but i'm just saying they the people are looking for yeah, they're looking for these type yeah, of events to go to. and actually from 2019 in a bourbon uh first friday event there's a brooch boutique truck set up so you have businesses that are leaving rochester to go to events like this well that's yeah. what i say once you once you open it up you're opening it up for any congress <laughs> and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, um, uh, but go ask you Kevin if he wants well, to reverse I mean, mortgage. People, people from Texas, here. I guess. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah. I feel yeah. like that seems. But it seems like we could control that. As well. I mean, all we have to do exactly. Is write the language. Write the ordinance so that we have the say of this company. Until somebody accuses you of discrimination. I'm 100 percent all for this. I definitely want this to happen for downtown. It just needs to be structured correctly, and like. I guess when I'm approached one way and then I'm approached again with somebody with a form that's that's describing it a different way, that's when everything's wishy-washy and I don't really know which way to go and that's why I'm here to try to figure out what, and I do like their thinking, I do really like the idea of building back yeah. downtown, but I mean that's why I'm back here where I'm from to try to help revive downtown. But. I, I just at the start I don't believe that food trucks as the focus is going to pull a lot of people in the first place and it all, the only thing it's really going to do is hurt me. If you have an event based around it, I'm all for it. I and I think that's the difference that the mayor is saying it's all about food trucks where this group right. is saying no. it's not entirely But that's what we were told, Jay. Exactly. That's, what, that's what I was told what it was about. Yep, me too. My, the two things were food trucks and we're paying for people's electric and water. Uh, that's what I was told, and that's what was sent to me. So the other things where that did we, that come yeah, from? Where did that, come that from? we need a little bit better, you know, it could be this way, this way, <laughs> something structured. And I personally think that we, I would, as a matter of fact, about to make a motion that we would table this with further consideration as to what we could do to benefit a, a, a Friday downtown. Or uh, Sunday. Friday. I love the right. Sunday. Well, Sunday. Because no other community does Sunday. They do Saturdays, they do Fridays, and the reason they do Saturdays is because everybody else around them is doing Fridays. And you know, so, a lot of times if you do that odd day, I, I know that everybody does auctions on Saturday. You throw one in there on a Thursday night, and you know what? Where do all these people come from? We're just watching. There's not a, yeah, so you throw another, throw another day in there. Things for us to consider. I'm, I'm all for the all day idea. But let's, let's work this a little bit. Gentleman in the next to the back row there, had his hand up. Me. Back there. You? Me. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, uh, and I didn't recognize you. Yeah, yeah. I put on a little bit of weight. So. Um, <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> um, I like the Sunday idea. And, and the reason is, is when I was in Avon, I was a scout leader. And we had 12 boys in our troop. Well, we moved the scout meetings to Sunday evenings at 630. And our troop went from 12 boys to 102. And that's exclusive. You know, and that was a selling tool that we used because, hey, we're not competing with other troops because they all met Wednesday or Tuesday at that specific time. Well, people who had divorces and everything else, that was their midweek turnover. One parent might not be involved in it and everything else. But it was an exclusive date that we had, and it worked for people. And, you know, listening to the businesses, I understand 100% your, your life and your people's life is on the line in finances and money you know and if you could and I could understand where a group wants to come in and make changes and bring people downtown and and Rochester has a lot to offer and I think you know the best of both worlds would be 
you know, if you had it on a Sunday, because listening, that's a major contributor where everybody's business is kind of a little slower on Sunday and you're not competing and you're not having to compete against Warsaw or Argus or these other places. So if you had it on an off day, to quote well, Miley Cyrus, it's the best of both worlds. With all the restaurants closed on Sunday, the, the hardest part, especially once I started getting really busy, was I had to start saying no to the other communities because I didn't have enough energy within myself and enough staff to go over to another community to do what it takes to do that. So on a Sunday, heck yeah, then I would put something outside. And I think these you know? guys are just saying first oh. Friday that they would be open to whatever yeah, works for everybody. This is a proposal. Yeah, this is simply a proposal. There wasn't any reason that's not. Yeah. What, I, what I'm hearing is there's a lot of room for creativity and uh, gosh we can't overlook the things that we have moving in some direction like the round bar and pop and uh, christine i don't know maybe you're the one to speak to about that but is there something with her harry i'm here there's something Julia. with that i'm here ted that could uh, where is she julie, julie. oh julie, i'm here I'm sorry I didn't see her right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean we is there are. something with your group that could blend with this group that's what i was gonna there's I mean, the event you know? I haven't talked to Bryce, but I've talked to other restaurants. I want to, when we open, I want to see stuff like haystack specials and picking in a grinning. I, I want them packed and then come to the Opry. We are going to have the most boring concession stand you've ever seen because we want them out and about and come to us on Thursday and Friday nights, twice a month. Um, we're shooting to be opened by the nickel plate. Um, we're one back order away from that not happening, so that's kind of a soft. Just, I'm we're, sorry for stealing some thunder here, but how are you doing on the marquee? We're, um, the next 20 days will be very good. Very telling, I'll say that. We are, we've been invited by the Community Foundation to apply for a grant. We have quietly raised, uh, quite a bit to match towards that grant and we've got a hit list right after. I believe that is June 6th. Uh, everything else um, other than carpet has been quoted and awarded. Uh, the county gave us some ARP funding. The band is practicing weekly. They did the Round Barn Gala. They're doing the opening of the lake. They're doing the fair. We are out there. And like we want it to be more about Main Street than it is us. Our movie plans are two bucks, <coughs> you know, senior yeah, night, yeah. all that. I, I We're coming. Share, I would just share <laughs> this with you. Uh, four years ago, we went over to Wabash to speak to the Honeywell folks about the revitalization of their downtown movie theater. They were going, my gosh, it was what a chore. When they got the marquee oh, back for the sure. and turned it on in Wabash, checks just start oh yeah out. what we no we are so close and we we had special meetings last week on the marquee as soon as we get the green light on funding those trucks are showing up like they're ready to work we've been monitoring the light bulb situation which sounds odd but we need 1139 so we do not need the supply chain <laughs> issue on that um i mean we are ready and we've got about four more local businesses just saying say the word when we know that outcome of the June 6 decision um, inside we're gonna pinch pennies but I think we've got it if we stay focused but we need the restaurants I want there to be a cheeseburger at Ruthless with who knows what a great name and come downtown eat come to the opera those guys are hilarious, by the way. I can't wait till everyone meets them. They're wonderful. Very exciting. Can't wait. And our lead girl just got a, a songwriting contract on the national level. Good for her. So, and that's what okay. she's living upstairs too. We we got her feet in the ground. We're keeping her. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Can I just say something about retail part? I'm from Florida, so I have no part of this we'll be open like we'll stay open we have to have that business we have to have those new people coming into our but you know coming into flirt shop in downtown it's not just about restaurants 
We have retail that needs it. When the round bar, we can't wait for them to open. We're gonna stay open late. We have to have that traffic from the outside town just come shop, see what we have to offer. I mean, we're growing. We have to have that new business downtown. Are you downtown. still doing the internet business? Right yeah, we're, I mean, online still, but to physically have somebody come into our store, we have to have, I mean, we have a special experience when they come in. Our customer service is out, you know, outstanding. We have to have those people come into our store. Online versus in-store, in-store beats it every single day. People like to have that conversation. They like to get to know our town. We pass them on to Duretti's and Evergreen and Ruthless and, you know, the Streamwire, the DM. We tell them all about the restaurants in our town. But we, it's all about the, like, what I'm hearing right now, it's all about the food trucks. We have, no, we have such great restaurants in our town that would benefit hugely from First Fridays, Saturdays, or Sundays, whatever day. But we'll be open late, no matter what day it is. I, I would say that the biggest complaint from people from out of town, what they say, is there's just not enough in town to bring me here enough. Okay? I hear that time and time again. And, and one of the things that COVID has done to my business is I don't see the Plymouth, the Logan Sport, the Peru people coming out every week like they used to and that's that's hurting okay so business 101 if if you think that you're going to survive within your community you got it going wrong business 101 you will fail as soon as all the monies within that community stays in that community and you're not drawing from outside of the community everybody will fail and we've got i think that there's a concern right now to where you have to do something because I know I'm not drawing them from out of town like I used to. And last week, yes, we need to uh, change our reservation from Thursday to Friday. Friday at five o'clock, is that still early enough to come into the dining room and not be overcrowded? So just in case the three of us that's coming from all different directions, just in case one of us has COVID, we're not spreading it to everybody else. And I, I know our community doesn't think that COVID is real and all that stuff, but there's still an issue with people out there. Okay, so that's why we're not seeing people coming from other communities because they, they really are a little bit concerned on, hey, is it safe enough to come from other communities? So, you know, let's get out there and say, yep, it's safe. <laughs> Think COVID's still an issue, Harry? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not obviously not as severe as it was, but it's certainly. No, but effects. they are concerned about it. Yeah. They are. Yeah. And and they don't want to spread if they're coming from other communities and they don't want, you know, to to be overly crowded and feel funky because because for two years we've been yeah. spreading ourselves out. This gentleman has been trying to say something right here in the blue shirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll okay. give you a chance. No, to have floor. You, know, you, you mentioned skin in the game. So, uh, was what May 14th? Uh, Jessica down here had an event hosted for me because I I do photos and I put them on Canvas and I sell my stuff through her name Nook. And you know, two or three of the customers that you know came in, they went down to Evergreen. You know, and that was one of the things when they, you know, look, they're, they look on Google and they're like, but I think it was a, one gentleman, he's an attorney in Warsaw and, and she's a professor. Um, so anyway, but they, they looked and that was their go-to, you know, they're like, we're going, to, we're going to Evergreen, you know? So, and, but I also had, it wasn't a food truck, it was a coffee truck, but it was parked way back on the street. And that, that's kind of why I'm here because I'm like, what in the world? Why would they have to go clear back here, away off the beaten path? You know, because there was support in that local business that had the skin in the game that you know she wanted something to draw people in, and that's kind of what I think they're going with is they're wanting to something to draw people into the community for that particular event. You know, because once you're here and you see it, you know you're like then you're kind of hooked. You know, you're going to come back and again, again, again. Grace, you haven't experienced it yet, but uh, the best day of Giretti's year 
was the car show. When 8,000 people hit Rochester. Imagine Don, Don and say day. that's that that was her best day. And that's what I'm, I'm saying. Like as long as we have something like that in the event, I don't care if we have four car shows out of 12 months. That's great. I mean, those guys come into my restaurant every fourth Wednesday of the month. You know, so I know they'd be willing to show off their cars more than once a year. Again, it's it's something that takes a lot of work, and I. I don't know if anybody's here. Well, Jillian, you're the closest thing to the car group here, right? It takes a little work, doesn't it? Jillian, are you still there? I can't see you. <laughs> I promise I'm here. <laughs> oh, there she is. Okay. It's a lot of you work. Do, you do take care of your eyes. I know, I got you. <laughs> I called Lenny Conley to somebody the other day, and he went in close. <laughs> so, I, I would suggest we do what John has come up with, that we table it for now, allow some more discussion and details and ideas, because I do think it's a great idea to bring more people in to the community, and we can go from there. I appreciate the presentation tonight. You've yep. done a very nice job, and you've been very gracious in hearing some negative comments. I appreciate that as well. But what, what you've done is challenge the thinking, and that's a good thing. So. And that was the goal. Sure. Yeah. Even if nothing came of this, at least think about it and get that get the thought going. I would definitely encourage you to work with restaurants. Uh, work with mm. <coughs> Times Theater through Round I think there's I think there's opportunity there. Oh I I I'm building hotels in my mind for it. Like, you, you can't wear me out. And you guys are certainly open to work with Absolutely, and we, we are reliant on, we need a 100 mile radius to make, at least, to make the Opry work. Yeah. Like, and we've got, we're nearing, we're soon approaching that period where we need to start marketing. Yes, sir. Uh, Tyson, just, I'm supporting the group from, I'm in the Leadership Academy with them. Uh, it sounds like to me there's a lot of miscommunication from the groups. Obviously, the way this, the group presented it to the way the council received it to other conversations. So, is there, is there someone from the council or someone willing who can the group go to to find a location? Because that's going to be a very hard barrier to get past. So, is there someone that could be a point person for the leadership group to work with? and then present that to the group and obviously pull in restaurants if there's any restaurants that wouldn't want to be part of a task force or something like that. But who can be the point to the city? So well, communication's clear. Here's how the city government works in a third class city, which is what Rochester is. The city council is the legislative group. They write the ordinances and the laws and then work on the budgeting side as well. The board of works is the statutory side they have helped the mayor in running with the city and in making those decisions as to what happens downtown, what street will be closed off, what what happens here, what happens there, and that's what the Board of Works meetings involve quite a bit. So your statutory side of the, this the Board of Works, this group writes the ordinances. Um, Christine's been to numerous Board of Works meetings. And uh, I made mention of, of it a, a while ago, but uh, whenever a group, whether it's uh, RDP or uh, the theater group or whomever come and they want to do something, that board is expecting a very detailed plan. Uh, it's not their job to plan the event or lay it out. It's, they will approve what can be done. So that, that's kind of how it works. Um, and the other issue with that is no no one council member speaks for the entire council. So yeah, that's true. Work, on, work on a subgroup can <coughs> happen. That certainly does. I, most of us are on other boards and other things, but uh, not not acting as a council. But I can only speak for myself in a meeting. I might have an opinion of how the council might vote, but no guarantees. So that's a, that's a, that's a tough one. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So to the question is that, is there someone on the board? Any 
you want to do that to them. What the board works, you know. Yeah. Them to them. Keep them up. Yeah. If they're not here, let's let's pick them up. <laughs> That's what I was going to suggest is that you go to the board of the public works and so go to their meeting. One of their meeting and go in and, and just make the how it's involved. Yeah. Again, a great source of somebody who's worked that several times. I've been here in the corner. Yes. Yeah. She was very good to talk to. Well, and she'll tell you the first one was probably pretty brutal. What yep. you need a plan. How many times did you hear that from okay. Yeah. 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 So yeah, she's a very good source. She's done a good job. And you had a tough road to hope. You've done a good job. Thanks. You bet. Okay. Um, table, is that the motion? Yes, it's table. Okay. Okay. It's like I I think you have to vote. I table that I don't think there's any voting or anything. Is there anything? So I need to talk to you. If, you, if your motion is to table it, you have to vote because there's a motion. John made the motion. Marty seconded it. What are we doing during the table period? Are we uh, waiting for an waiting, ordinance? Waiting for waiting a plan? Waiting for something brought, we brought to us, something different. And also to think if we come up. I mean, one of us could come up with something. It's not impossible. I just, I just want to make sure <laughs> the lines of communication are open. They know what sure. we would expect, and so we could just table it. Certainly. So you want to come back in time, two months, or when do you come up with a plan? <coughs> Another plan. I'm sitting here thinking, do you want me to just leave it on the agenda and it's <laughs> open, and if these guys don't come back, table. or there's no discussion, you guys haven't come up with anything, but sure. that's not a table. I guess I'm, I'm, I don't. I am very new to all of this, and the, the politics, the the event side, all of it. I don't know where to go from here if the, um, I guess, if the ordinance is never going to change, I don't know what to, I guess, I don't know what to plan or what, and the we, thing is, every see, time we, we come up with a plan. We need to see something before we can do any changes. But I come up with a plan, and then I have 15 other restaurants, or not even restaurants, business owners, who don't like my plan, so then we have to go back and change the plan. Or, change or you don't like the plan, um, the Welcome location, to or the day, or, you know, so I, it's I, really I, hard wait to Wait until they get your phone number out there. Julie so kindly did not have my cell phone number. Yeah. Well, but that could be for every other week. Just, oh, God. just a suggestion, don't get... Don't get mirrored or locked into, gosh, we got to be a Warsaw, gosh, we got to be a Bourbon, or gosh, we got to be an artist. Uh, figure out what would work for Rochester and, and use all the players. As I said, we've got lots of folks who are looking to do things. In the room. Yeah, a lot of experience. Oh, there's a lot of experience in this room right now. Uh, yeah, uh, try to come up with something that will fit appropriately for Rochester. Again, uh, my main goal is not to have four of those empty situations in a year, those store fronts or whatever. Well, yeah. and that's why the proposal is having an, an annual approval process, as opposed to just saying willy-nilly, you know, here you go, events are approved, you can have them limitless from here on out. I feel like if you would say, you know, you have to come back and get that approved every year because that way you could get with, you know, the businesses downtown and say, how is this working for you guys? Is it not working? If it's not working, then we'll just say, no, this is not approved for this year. Or, you know, until we can provide some other proof, I guess, that it's going to work out or change the plan. Um, that's why the annual approval was kind of geared towards kind of a safety net. So it's not just an ongoing thing that we're just loose with, you know, for here on out. That was, anyway. Good. So we got a proposal to table it. There was a second. There's that was in favor. Yep. Okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having us. Thank to all of you. She's so pretty. You need to be very Okay. Pardon me? Ed, you're up. Yes, it sounds like uh, after listening to everybody to bring people in the community, and I know you're the legislative branch, and you're, I'm not going to ask you to vote on anything, but uh, my old shop teacher, Mr. Hawkinson, said you have to have a plan, and that's kind of why I'm here, is uh, to, to elicit information from people, and uh, I want to get a parade back going on in Rochester, and I know in the past, it, the last one hasn't worked out that well, and and. I know some ideas over, they started charging people. It might not have been a great time to have it. There was nothing downtown and uh, 
I've been working with Christine and uh, going to help out at the Arts and Music Festival and maybe piggyback it before that or whatnot, but I'm, I'm trying to determine the date on that. However, you know, I, I think looking around to other communities and after I graduated, I went to the Navy for 22 years then I worked in the Avon schools for 13 and now I'm back here in Rochester, uh, the greatest town in Indiana. So uh, I, I'm, I'm happy to be back home and I, I want to get this parade. I want to jump in with both feet and I know it's not until 2023. However, I think it brings some exposure that everybody's looking for to the city. I know it's going to, I want some personality and tradition back in uh, Rochester. Rochester has a lot of phenomenal things. And I don't think putting a parade in would take away from anything else. I think it would bring people in. And uh, I, I just remember how the parades were when I was little, and I remember how they were when I was older. You know, and I, I just love parades. I go to the Akron Fourth of July parade every year. I go to the Kiwana parade. You know, every time I see a parade, the Blueberry Festival parade, I just think it brings the community close together. You know, the politicians, hey, both, both parties are walking out on the street. The veterans are walking out on the street. Uh, youth leagues, church groups, you know, it just brings everybody. Restaurants could be out there handing out cards. And, and I just want to be able to, to kick that off. And I know that the expenses is going to be insurance, advertisement, and, and you got to have some trophies. And then I know I have to have permits, and I'm going to be talking with the Board of Works when, when uh, it comes a little further on. But I just wanted to let you guys know from the top, because you're on a lot of other boards, and also you're in the community. And I just wanted to let you guys know that I am going to be planning a parade, and I'm not going to expect anybody else to do it. My wife and I uh, want to jump in with both feet. And I, I got about five more years left on my life, so I think I should be going <laughs> no, I should be around for a long time. So I, I'm willing to help out and uh, yeah. and good to go. I eyes older than you. I know, I know. So, but 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 I just wanted to let you guys know what I was planning. I know it's going to be a lot of work, and uh, you know I I look at the downtown area and I, I appreciate every you know coming downtown. I think it's even better than when I was a kid coming to the downtown area and I just enjoy every time I come home or people from Indianapolis come up I, I love driving around Rochester and you know it, it is unique you have the Tippy Canoe River you have the lake you have the dam you know you have the nice downtown area you have great restaurants you know there's a lot going on in Rochester and it's exclusive where you have so much in such a little condensed area and I think it's a hidden jewel I just want to put a little more personality back into it by having a parade and, and I'm not going to put it during the car show, you know, because I know it's already busy enough downtown, you, you know, I, I, you know, so, so, you know, timing is everything and what, the, what you have and even placing it not in the summertime because I want the kids from the school, you know, to be involved and when they're out of town and I want youth leagues to be involved. You know, so either spring or the fall would probably be best for that. And when you have kids, you have parents and grandparents who's going to show up to the parades. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so I, I just wanted to thank you guys for giving me this opportunity to pitch my uh, parade idea. And I hope you guys will be on the street and in the parade in 2023. Well, you know, thank you. Uh, I said years ago, we'll be there. Uh, you know, we had it one time, one time it was a parade world, we did round barn, we had circus parades, we had all sorts of things, you know, parade wise, and I said years ago, the community needs to celebrate once in a while, yeah. and parades aren't bad, and, and our veterans, boy, they're not getting any younger, we need to have some recognition there in parades and stuff. I, I think you've got a great idea. It still comes back to, uh, you know, I'm glad you and your wife are stepping up, but if it's going to sustain itself, you need a Christine. Uh, we're already talking with her. Okay. And, okay. and, and we're all already volunteered for that, and we're, we're jumping in with both feet and helping out in the Arts and Music Festival. Oh, that's, that's so great. We're gonna... Christine, what was one of the first things we talked about when you were wanting to get going? The old days and taking the Round Barn Festival, and you had a Lee Jennings, and you had a Doris Hood, and you know, you had, you had a core group of people who every year, they were behind it. You had Tom over at Kiwana, still over there, doing the, remember we talked about yeah. him? 
We talked about the 4th of July parade that You got people who, who, who have ownership of it. Government doesn't do that stuff very well. So, yeah, that sounds pretty exciting. Well, it does. Thanks, great. Great idea. Thank you. Okay, we ready for uh, Chief Tom? Good evening. Good evening. A month of April. <laughs> Structure fires, one in the city. Utility pole fires, one in the city. Brush grass fires, one in Rochester Township, one in Newcastle Township. Excuse Auto me, fire Tom, alarms. Can, can, I can I interject just a minute? You folks don't have to stay if you need to get a, something else. Oh, I hear do yours. I'm boring you all just go on. Tom would be looking out of the corner of your eyes. Nobody's going to leave out here. I'll be quick, I'll be brief, and I'll be gone. Okay. Uh, vehicle fires, one in Rochester Township, one in Midland Township. Trash fires, one in the city. Accidents, three in Rochester Township. Medical assists, 19 in the city, nine in Rochester Township, one in Newcastle Township. Lift assist, two in the city. Gas leaks, two in the city, three in Rochester Township. CO checks, one in the city. Service calls, three. Canceled calls, three in the city, two in Rochester Township, one in Richland Township. That totals 58 calls, and we conducted one drill. That concludes my report. <laughs> Oh no! Oh my gosh! Chief, look what you've got. Top Thank you, Paul. Oh, look here. He look here. Chief so, hey, <laughs> shots. Top for the month of April: ten accidents, twenty-eight warnings, forty-four offenses, uh, forty-three case reports, four hundred nineteen calls for service, twenty-eight lockouts, six towed vehicles, twenty-one people incarcerated, and then you have the crimes that those people were lodged for. Other than that, we are hiring again. We're trying to hire for both uh, officers and dispatch. Anybody one. like to be a police officer? Or a fireman, I got it Oh my God, or a fireman. We, we take one of each. I have to go through the uh, <laughs> dual <laughs> training. Can I, can I, just I guess donuts too. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I'm too interested. You're in the coloring book, by the way. I just need a badge. I know. Yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, I got a sticker badge in my truck. Okay. Yeah, and that, that's all I have unless you have any questions. Brady Briggs is at the Academy. He's on his fourth week. Uh, we've got one just coming off the FTO. It's still a little green, but he's catching on, and then we need to, we need to hire one more. Let's see. See what the application process looks like again. Any, uh, I know I don't know where it works up, but any thoughts on a dog? You know, we lost the one dog. Yeah, I don't have the budget this year. I mean, I can come up with something, but right now I'm, I'm worried about getting fully staffed and everybody trained. Three to one academy. Yeah. I'll put it in the budget for next year. Okay. We'll see what happens. Okay. Questions for the chief? Thank you, thank you, gentlemen. No, they're just going to talk amongst themselves, and now's the time to go. No way. We'll go outside so they can have their meetings. Oh, they're still going. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You all right? My first call. Yeah, I'm going back. Is that a motion to adjourn? Yes. No, I just didn't ask Say, you know what you do? Like the, I remember the mayor said the one time everything's written down. We all know what's going on. There we get Read. Remember you did that? Yeah. Yeah. Marty was upset because yeah. I see you. Yeah. I had to say something. I had to say something good. Yeah. He thought, don't turn the gift away. I remember. Like I remember. you could do that. We could do that gift together tonight. Well, you know, it's a gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. I would accept that motion. Uh, 
We've got Harry here tonight. Uh, Harry, anything to report on RDP? Uh, just basically, we have started the process of making the signs that were approved last month. We, Craig Welding is cutting them right as we speak, and probably we'll have them done by the end of next week. That's the that basically they're. You weren't here, Mayor, but there's a sign that's going to be about that size. It's going to say historic downtown Rochester in an arrow. It's going to go in seven different locations around the city. We've got the approval from the county, and they're working on trying to secure the posts and the installation of those signs. And then uh, we had launched the Hero Banner Project today. We've taken the forms out to the libraries and uh, the um, American Legion, and there'll be some available in other places, but that's going to hit the press release, and it's um, that be where we can. The banners will be uh, hung on the city light poles after the Christmas decorations come down, and before the Siotes banner goes up, there'll be that notch in there. The banners, $150, and proceeds go to RDP for downtown beautification projects. So. It's it should be a good project. Why did you brought up the banners? Did you give them you guys put some kind of coordination? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, when we would. Because yeah. we had three people now who were doing banners. So, yeah, it's, it's uh, after this Christmas decorations go down, the hero banners will go up. And then, it's like in about this time of year, the, the Siotes banners will go up through the summer to the chili cook off. And then those banners will go up. Car show banners. Yeah. yeah. And then Christmas decorations. So Great. basically four different Great. things. Okay. Great. Anything else? That's it. You guys got any questions? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I'll accept that. Are you skipping the rest of it? Well, was that a motion to adjourn? Mm -hmm. okay, I have some yeah. reports here. Okay. Uh, so. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no. I have a motion to adjourn. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, Andy and I, we made a motion and I said second. Somebody second. Todd's saying it. I know. We can vote on it. Very quickly, anything to report to Brian? Uh-oh. We do it anyway. I don't like it. You don't have anything to report. Uh-oh. I started at the wrong end, didn't I? You don't have anything to report to this. 20 new trees went in this past week. How many? 20. Great. Wow. Great. Great. Wonderful. And those are paid for by Duke, right? Um, yeah. yeah. I believe so. Dr. Lyle's down. Just a great suspicious. Yes. 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 Just a great <laughs> <laughs> No, that's okay. I'm pretty sure. Marty, you have something to report. 2,094 trips. Uh, transpo. For tiny transpo and April. Wow. They're back. Well, that's still an honest Damn. word, it's pre-COVID, but that's a lot coming back with the uh, vengeance here. All right. You got anything? I've got the Duckers report that I can share with you guys. A um, couple of things. The Blackbird Drive did the first phase of water lines in, so Mitch Melton now has water. Um, and I know Tiffany is working with another business on a phase one for a, a possible land purchase, and that's the EPA grant. And, and Mike Rich at the top building, they were not aware of the T-Mobile hometown grant. Uh, and they're looking at a historic, historic renovation grant with Okra and Atkins and the rest of the team. Okay. Can you include me on that, Brian? Yep. So we, uh, we missed an opportunity with uh, Jason Hutkins. He purchased uh, one of the buildings down in Grizzle that was on the highway, putting that information development center in there. And uh, that was one of the thoughts he had for the old jail. So I see how they down through uh, their, their table for that. Um, that's all I know about things going on right now. Any questions for Brian? Ruth? Cancel. <laughs> Meet tomorrow for the redevelopment. Yeah. Commission. She's about the area plan commission. You're the area, area plan. plan. That's right. I'm the area plan. That's right. Nothing to well, we should, we should act on. Water. Everything's going well on the water board. Jackson's got the bid, and I went by the other day, and they're tearing that house down. I Are mean, they really? my word. No, it's bare ground. It's gone. It's gone. It's bare ground.
I mean, they get in there and they did it. I, I looked. Pardon me, the one next to the plant. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they got that bid for uh, 10500 bucks. And I mean, tell you, it's gone. Yeah. They move in and they. We don't have to worry about where the stuff goes. Oh, no. No, not with them. No, no. Todd? Recycle Board met. They were able to collect and distribute. Okay, uh, nothing else. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second.